Hey, it's the Prophet Answer Man, Rocky Lalvani. Last episode, you heard from Ariana Sylvester about Prophet First. Today, her husband and business partner chimes in with his thoughts. Profit first then allowed us to have, it's a simple system. It's really great at helping you manage your cash flow. And for people like Ariana and a lot of business owners that don't want to look at their finances, it's a really good entryway into how do we have less fear around our finances and start to take ownership? And that's what it's done for our business. And what we found with working with other entrepreneurs is it's a really good stepping stone to help all of us not be so afraid of our business finances to start managing our cash flow and get to a healthy, healthier spot and then move them into understanding how your income statement, some of these other financial statements ultimately helps your business. At the end of the day, you have to look at the financial statements or have someone who does it for you with the goal of improving the profitability of your company. In the day-to-day operations, Profit First helps you make better decisions going forward with clarity. And that's the goal of this podcast, to help you, the business owner, understand your financial numbers so you can make better decisions. We learn about money mastery without all the complicated accounting mumbo-jumbo using a simple system. Your accountant is busy documenting your transactions and creating a rear view mirror of what happened. My guess is you probably don't even look at the reports. If you're like most business owners, you struggle with this, and it's not your fault. We are not taught money in school. The Profit First system created by Mike Michalowicz works, and he certified me to help you implement it in your business. Remember, the new equation is sales minus profit equals expenses. Let's face it, without cash flow, you can't pay your employees, buy your needed materials, pay your mortgage, support your family. I help you to do that and more so you can focus on the parts of the business you love and receive the rewards for your labor and investment into your business. Just remember, more revenue does not equal more profit. That's why we focus on the bottom line. Please let me know where you're struggling and what you want to hear more about. My email is questions at ProfitAnswerMan.com. I read them all, and I'll get back to you. Today, we're going to talk about some advanced profit-first techniques. So, the standard answer to most of these questions is, when in doubt, add an account. You need to buy a large piece of equipment, add a new employee, or you have a seasonal business, Each of those can have their own account. Sometimes this is where a quick call with me may be helpful. Just schedule one through the the link in the show notes. So let's dig into some of these extra accounts. Just remember, don't do this for small stuff. You want to do this for the larger stuff or for something you see in the future that may be a larger expense. My favorite account is the vault account. It's an account where you keep a minimum of three months of cash flow to run your business without a single dollar coming in. Remember, I just said minimum, right? Not maximum. Why? Because we face storms. We're in the midst of two storms right now. For some business owners, COVID shut them down. And then the protests caused more trouble. We also have supply chain issues. It's not a matter of when you will face a storm or if you will face a storm. It's a matter of when. This storm is being faced by everyone, but we can also have our own personal storms. Remember a couple episodes back, we had Aaron on and he talked about how he had 18 months of cash in his vault. That's phenomenal. Vault accounts should also have an instruction manual for how and when to use this money and what steps should be taken before accessing the funds. That might be cost cutting, going after more sales first. In the midst of the storm, more often than not, we can't think. That's why having an instruction manual helps us to think. The purpose is to get you thinking and acting instead of reacting in panic mode or shutting down. 
I've talked to many business owners as we've gone through COVID, and some of them are thriving. Some of them have rebuilt their businesses and are now doing better. And then there's a group of people who just sat stuck, and they're the ones who are struggling because they didn't act. I'm going to go through a whole bunch of these different accounts, and we'll cover them quickly. Another account is the stocking account. So if you have to buy a large amount of inventory that slowly sells off over time, it's nice to have the cash to buy it up front. As we sell it off, we put the appropriate amounts into a stocking account. So the next time you have to buy a large order that might last you six months or 10 months, you have the money ready to do this. Another account that you could have is a pass-through account. So one example for this could be travel expenses that you get reimbursed from a customer. You may also have certain items that you purchase on behalf of your customer and just directly bill them the amount. So this is kind of more of a reimbursement type model where you spend up front and get reimbursed. And this keeps that separated so it's easy to see. There's also a material account. This is similar to a pass-through account, but it's more likely in a business, say like HVAC, where you buy systems for customers and deliver them, but your real business isn't selling the equipment, it's installing the equipment. You can have these large material costs separated out so you don't get confused at how much money you really have to spend. Another type of account is a subcontractor or commission account. If you use subs that you directly pay out or you pay a commission on sales, it's good to pull that money right off the top because essentially it's not yours. Another account that some people like to use is an equipment account. Let's say you're in a business that has expensive equipment that needs to be replaced either every year or maybe every five years. This is a perfect way to save for it. You've got to take the number of years and useful life of your equipment and figure out the percentages to put aside for this amount. And these these amounts are a lot of times very small percentages, but because they go for a longer period of time, they build up. They allow you to just pay cash when you're ready to buy new equipment. The next account is a drip account. These are great for where you have large projects where you get paid up front for months of work and you put them in the drip account and you pull them out slowly over the life of the project or over time. And this helps you to smooth out cash flow and prevent yourself from overspending. A drip account can also be used for a seasonal business. So if the majority of your sales are within three months, your drip account gets full in those three months and then slowly drips out over the remaining nine to ensure you've got smooth cash flow. There's also a prepayment account. So if you know that in your business, you can get a large discount for paying up front for certain services or products, then you can save up your prepayment so you're ready to take advantage of a large cash discount when it's offered. If you collect sales tax, you've got to have a sales tax account. You should already have this if that's the case. It should come right off the top and be separated because it's not your money. It's the government's money. You're just collecting it for them. So please don't mingle it with your other funds. Keep it separate. Some businesses are in startup mode or they're bringing in outside capital or they're they're taking out a large loan. Like some people right now are taking out PPP loans or EIDL loans. It's a good idea to keep this money segregated and separate. I got to tell you, I hate to borrow money and I hate to give away equity. So only do this if the return on it is significantly higher than what you could do otherwise. We're going to keep this money separated. And then when you need to use it, you need to do it intentionally. So this is the outside capital account. The funds sit there until you have a really, really good reason to spend them. 
Remember, is this profit first? What's going to be the return on your spend? For those of you with the PPP, some people are putting the PPP money in that account, and when they have an appropriate forgivable expense, that's when they pull it out of that account. Sometimes you decide you want to add a new employee to your company, but you don't know if you can afford it and you want to be sure that you do it right. So we create a new employee account. We set aside money and save up for the new employee for a couple months. The first thing that does is it shows us whether we can afford a new employee because we're paying the employee already into the account. The other thing is when you get a new employee on board, it's rare that they're profitable on day one. It takes a little while for them to get used to the job and for their work to provide the returns. And so this account allows you to get used to that and helps you cover the first couple months of salary as they're getting up to speed. While we're here, let's talk a little bit about labor costs. Labor is a cost is a percentage of your revenue. And the range that Mike shares is two and a half to four times the labor cost is what your revenue should be. So how do you know where you're at? Some industries like tech or maybe accounting or highly professional, it's closer to two and a half times revenue. For businesses with low labor costs, it's generally four times labor cost. So a million dollar business that has low labor costs would take a million and divide it by four and say we should allocate 250,000 to labor. On the other side, if you've got a high paying industry, it's a million dollars and you divide it by two and a half, we'll allocate 400,000 for labor. For your specific industry, there should be benchmarks out there. And you can go find the benchmark for your industry and make sure that that spending is in line. Sometimes we have too many people on our payroll. You may also have your own unique accounts for your business. But remember, it should be a larger percentage of sales. We don't want this to get too complicated. The other thing is do your best to hide these accounts and label them in such a way that you don't touch them. For example, you could label the tax account government money. So you know it belongs to the government. It's not yours. All of these allocations should be written down and followed. For my clients, I create a spreadsheet for them. They just enter the sales and it tells them the exact amount to allocate each month or each out, whatever your allocation period is. You can create your own spreadsheet to do this. It's pretty simple. The goal is to stop focusing on expenses and to focus on profit. We need to make sure we're doing our best to increase profit in the business. The other thing that we always want to ensure is that you're getting paid. How do we do this? Figure out how much you're paid per month. And then if it's two paychecks or whether you're paid biweekly, Look at that income as a percentage of your sales and figure out how much revenue you need each month to ensure you get paid. You should know how much in sales you need at allocation time to ensure there's enough going into your salary account and you get paid. If you notice that it's low, that's signaling you that you need to be focused on sales and make sure that they are appropriate. Also, a note on the tax and profit account, depending on how you set up transfers to the hold accounts outside of your bank, you may be able to do it directly from your income account and skip the hold accounts. However, if you don't have a good process, then use the hold accounts to to do it. We just want to make sure that you appropriately know how much money you have to spend and you're using it wisely. So let's remember, you don't need more resources. You need to be more resourceful. Remember to focus on the bottom line. I know you guys are smart. You can do this. And we just sometimes have to put a little pressure on ourselves to make sure that we get it done. If you're the kind of person who doesn't want to deal with this and you know it's got to get done and you're willing to to have help on your team, that's what I'm here for. 
to help you make sure that you get this done and to alleviate this burden from you. If you want to learn about living the life of your dreams, check out my other podcast. It's called Richer Soul. So let's repeat the mantra. Revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. Let's thrive and grow. Have a profitable week.